Hi everyone, it's me Kat Muir from Cheap and Easy Eats and today we're going to do a Swiss roll meringue. So to begin with, all we need is Per egg white, we're going to use 50 grams of sugar. Now I find it best to use icing sugar just because it gives it a stiffer kind of end finish, but you can use granulated sugar or you can use um, caster sugar if you prefer. Caster sugar gives you a finer mix because it's a finer sugar. If you use granulated sugar you kind of get like more chewy bits in the middle so it just depends really on the end process but icing sugar works very well all the time so I quite like to use that. I'm going to use three eggs today and 150 grams of icing sugar so it's 50 grams per egg white so if if you want to do like scale it up if you've got more people coming you can do it that way if you want to scale it down and just use two eggs then you would just use a hundred grams of icing sugar so to get going what I'm going to do is separate my egg whites to my yolk and I'll use the yolks for something else and I've got a stand mixer today if you don't have a stand mixer that's okay if you just use a hand mixer it just takes a bit longer you can get a bit of a sore arm I use a stand mixer because I can go away and do other things and set a timer so that's why I'm going to do that today but you can use a hand mixer if you don't have one so if you're using a stand mixer you want the balloon attachment because that's going to whip the maximum amount of air in and if you've got the hand mixer you've just got the two little uh, mixing parts which are like two little ones of these. So I'm going to start off with the eggs. Now I like to, um, to separate the eggs in the eggshell. There's lots of different ways to do it but this is how I do it. So I'm going to crack the egg on the side. I'm going to just then open it slightly and let the egg white go in and then I'm just going to put the yolk in there. I know that no uh, bits of eggshell went in but you just want to always have a little check on it. If you're if you find that you're not quite happy with how to separate the eggs then just do it in two cups and then you can see if there's anything you need to take out and then put it in. It's also easier if your eggs are at room temperature. If they've been in the fridge then they're a little bit stickier to, to use, so room temperature is best. Okay, so I'm going to use my egg yolks for profiteroles and I'll do another video on that. I've got my egg whites in the stand mixer now and everything looks great. The stand mixer's clean. You have to make sure, egg whites can be funny, so you do have to make sure that your bowl's clean and dry before you put anything in. So I'm gonna switch it on, I'm gonna put it up to high and it's gonna whisk for a couple of minutes. been beating for about two minutes and I'm going to just let you have a look and see. So it's still quite um, frothy and it's not quite solid enough yet to use it as a meringue but you want it to get to this kind of stage before you start to add the sugar. And all I'm going to do is just add a little bit in at a time, especially when it's icing sugar because what can happen is it'll just go and kind of explode if you add it in while the machine's actually running. So I'm just going to put it on again on a slightly lower speed. Now that's incorporated that in. So all I'm going to do while the machine's running, I'm just going to put it down to low speed, put in a couple of spoons and then speed it up again. If you're using a hand mixer, then you would add a couple of spoons of sugar in and without the mixer being on, you would just incorporate the sugar into the mixture and then switch it on and that stops it from exploding up the way which I have done before. You can see it's starting to thicken up and take a nice shape. I'm just going to put the rest of my sugar in now. There's not very much left. Now that I've added all my icing sugar in, I'm going to beat it for five minutes on full speed. Mm -hmm. 
So all I'm going to do is just scrape down from the sides because with a stand mixer, unlike a hand whisk, you do have to scrape it down. And there's just some bits of sugar there I can see. It's been about four minutes, but I just wanted to stop and scrape this down so that I can incorporate it in. But you can see that the meringue's actually, it's lovely and it's only got another minute to go and that'll be it. When I first started to make meringues, I didn't beat them for long enough and the end result wasn't the best. And I lost my confidence with meringues and I didn't make them for many, many years. And it wasn't until I actually watched someone doing it, I realized that I hadn't beat it for long enough. So don't be tempted to skip this bit. It does take a little bit of time to beat it. So I'm gonna give it one more minute now on high speed and then that'll be us. Hi, so we're back. It's been five minutes that it's been whizzing around at top speed. It looks lovely. It's just all ready to go. And now for the meringue swish roll, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just spread it out nicely on here. So once I've spread it out, I've got the oven heating up just now to 140 Celsius and this only goes in for about 25 to 30 minutes. We want it to still be a little bit soft and chewy inside and that helps it become very easy to roll. It depends on what kind of oven you've got. If I've got a fan oven, so it makes it a little bit quicker. If you don't have a fan oven, then you might need 35 minutes. But you'll know, I'll show you, you'll be able to tell the way that you press it. It makes it quite clear. So I'm just scraping off the meringue just now. And what I'm gonna do is put some dollops on and I'm gonna spread them around. Now it's kind of tricky. I've seen other cooks and they've put a little bit of meringue on the other side underneath the paper to, to stop it from moving around. I don't really like that because it's quite difficult to clean up afterwards. So I just do it the harder way. I just hold it and I spread it down. You want it to be reasonably thin but to hold the whole shape. What you're looking for is to get a nice rectangular shape. I usually just take it to the size that the bacon tray is. So I quite like it just to be that sort of size and shape. But if I was doing a smaller one, then I would just make it a little bit thinner, narrower, and it would still work just as well. And you want it to be fairly even in the thickness all the way around. So it's quite good just to put on like smaller bits. If you don't have a spatula, you can use a, a knife, a couple of knives. This is for you, Lucy Bowers. When my friends come over from America, they love this dessert. So hopefully you can give it a try and let me know in the comments. I just want things that are fairly quick, fairly easy. They look good, they taste good. And this, when you'll see it when it's finished. This looks like a very expensive dessert that you've spent a very long time doing. And actually it's, it's, so, it's so easy and quick to do. And any of these little bits that are just that little bit thinner, they'll just break off once it's cooked. So that's kind of it. I'm going to put it in the oven now and give it uh, 25 to 35 minutes, depending on what kind of oven you've got and then once we take it out and I can let you see it and I'll show you how to press it and you'll see that it's actually cooked. So we'll just see you back in half an hour. So we're back and we've had 30 minutes in the oven and I've just wanted to show you what it looks like. So you can see it's a little bit crisp to the touch but also you can feel like it'll crack if I press it and that's just really what you want it to be like. Now I've, I've heard other people say to put in some vinegar or to put in uh, some cream of tartar when they're mixing it up and I've tried these things and I actually didn't find it made any difference whatsoever. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this to cool 
Once it's cooled, then we'll start to roll it and we'll fill it with our cream filling and we'll roll it and you'll see just how amazing a dessert it is. So we'll see you back in a few hours. Hi, so now the meringue has cooled down. I've left it behind me because what I'm going to do is mix up the filling. So I've mixed up my cream to a nice soft whip. There's a separate video for that which I'll link in the description. You can go and see how to do that if you want to. And all I'm going to do is make this really decadent filling for meringue which is so tasty and delicious. And what it is, is cream that's nice and softly whipped. 200 grams of chopped strawberries, which I'm just going to add in. And then I'm going to use some Nutella. Now, I use Nutella because it's nice and soft and it has a lovely hazelnutty flavour, which really complements the flavour of the meringue and brings out the flavour of the strawberries. So I'm going to mix that up in a second. I'm just going to use my nice and I'm just going to put in a couple of spoonfuls and now I'm just going to very gently, very softly, in a sort of figure of eight, just fold it all in. Now if you whip the cream too much you won't be able to do this, it'll turn into cheese so it has to be a soft whip because you're mixing it a little bit further around now. And if you want to substitute strawberries for raspberries, that's equally tasty. They don't hold their shape the same. What's What's quite nice about strawberries is it really holds that shape and texture so that when you get a mouthful of meringue and you get this cream, you get a bite on a bit of strawberry which makes it really delicious, in, in my opinion. But raspberries are really nice in this as well. Or you could ask, add some raspberries in too if you want to. And you can see there's still little streaks of Nutella because that's quite nice just to get a little mouthful of that too. Um, it just goes this lovely marbly colour. So that looks pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on my meringue and show you how to roll it. <gasps> Exciting stuff. Now I'm just going to take it out of the baking tray that I had. Okay, and what I'm going to do is get some cling film over the top and then I'm going to put it the other way round and I'm just going to gently lift it off. So let me show you how to do that. The reason that I use cling film is because it makes it very, very easy to, to put it on. And flip it over. So now I'm just going to use my baking sheet to help me again. I'm just going to turn it over and put it down just like that. No. It will crumble off and that's absolutely fine. You don't need to worry about that. There we go, perfect. Not very much has stuck to the paper as you can see. So all we're going to do now is just make sure I've got my cling film there. And any little bits that have crumbled, it doesn't matter, you can put them back in on the top or you can just, you know, eat them. <laughs> so anyway, now we're just going to make sure that we know what we're doing before we start. So we're going to roll it this kind of way. It has to kind of crack and break a little bit on the top so that you can roll it and that's fine. But we're, it's more a sort of fold rather than a roll. But anyway, just going to spread the topping on. If you hear a noise, that's actually my daughter's stomach rumbling because she's staring at it, <laughs> desperate to taste it at the end. 
and you want to have a reasonable covering of filling but not too thick because then you can't roll it over. It doesn't matter even if you miss a bit as well because it's going to be rolled over and I usually cut the end pieces off slightly so that it looks very very neat when you're serving it up. That looks really good, I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to start to roll it over. You can see it, it rolls fairly easily. That's what I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to take the other end in to bring it up. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it over onto the bottom part because that's the top part that you're going to see. So I've got this fancy dish that was given to me as a gift many, many, many years ago. I quite like little fancy eclectic type of things. And this is just a perfect size for, for the meringue roll. So all I'm going to do now is very gently, I'm going to pick it up and do my cling film. And I'm just going to pop it on the serving plate. And it just looks lovely and crumbly. tastes so lovely. And all I would usually do is melt a little bit of Nutella and drizzle it over. So I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to put a little bit in a dish that I can put in. I'm just going to put a little bit in a dish that I can put into the microwave and then I'll just drizzle that over the top to finish it and it just makes it look very very impressive when it's actually not that difficult to do. So I'll just be back in a minute. So all I'm going to do to finish it off is add a little bit of melted Nutella. I put it in the microwave along beside a cup full of water because if you're ever going to microwave any chocolate you have to put in a cup that you would drink boiling water out of that can take the heat with some water in it. So that's all I've done. I've just heated it up a little bit and I'm just going to drizzle it over. It's just quite nice to finish it off. Makes it look very pretty. And even if you get like a big lump on it, it doesn't really matter. It just gives it a nice finish. I'm using Nutella for this because that's what we've got on the inside. But you could also use some melted chocolate with a little bit of milk in it. Uh, not too much, just a couple of teaspoons and that just gives it a nice softness. Because you want it to be quite soft when it's cold and you're going to cut into it as well. And I think that looks pretty good. I know it's going to taste really nice. And all I'm going to do is just gently um, brush in these little bits of meringue and take away the big lump of Nutella that's just melted there. So I'm going to use a little bit of kitchen for that. And in actual fact, people don't really care because when you start to slice it up and they see how delicious it looks, they just want to taste it. They don't care if there's anything on the plate. But you can always sprinkle a little bit of icing sugar if you like as well or a little bit of cocoa powder. I just think it's quite nice with a little bit of melted Nutella. If I've got friends over and they know me I probably wouldn't cut the ends off. If it's people that I don't really know so well to make it even fancier I would just cut the very very end of it off. And just take that away. And you can see that that just makes like a, a really nice clean difference to it. 
and, and that's pretty much that's it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a slice now, let you see what it looks like on the inside. There we go. It just, it looks really nice. It just has that lovely appearance of something that's taken a real lot of work and a lot of time and it just tastes absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna get myself a spoon and I'm gonna taste it. Actually, I'll just use this spoon here. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> mm. It's so tasty and it's just very, very light. Um, in actual fact, I don't know if you can see, but the meringue inside is just, it's just cooked. So it's so light and fluffy and it just tastes absolutely gorgeous. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to finish that um, now. So I guess I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye.